I'm going to show you how to make millions in Escape from Tarkov with a few key principles and these basic strategies. The most important principle is price per slot. The trooper armor takes up nine slots, and while the trooper armor has a pretty high value, 100k, the syringe by itself has a value of 20k. So comparatively, when you're looking at this in raid and you come across this armor and you're like, okay, I'm going to take this out of raid. What you need to consider is that the trooper armor breaks down to a price of about 10,000 rubles per slot. So comparatively, it's worth about half the value of the syringe. If you were to carry out the same amount of space in syringes, you're gonna make about 36,000 more rubles. The next component of price per slot is your actual amount of slots. So if we look at some different backpacks here, if we look at the day pack, it is 20 slots. If we look at the tries, it's 30 slots. If we look at the attack two, we'll see that it's 35. So what all this basically boils down to is that the bigger backpack, the bigger your rig, the more slots you have. So some simple math, if we have a 20 slot backpack and we fill that with things that are worth 10,000 rubles per slot, then we are making 200,000 rubles. In the same exact raid, if we had a bigger backpack, if we had a tries it for 30 slots, we're making 300,000 rubles. The bigger your backpack, the more rig space that you have, the more money that you can take out of raid. Now, I know that tri-zips and attack twos are not exactly the cheapest things in the world, but when you're trying to make money and escape from Tarkov, you need to be able to take the loot out with you. Another major component of price per slot is the price that you're considering. So there's kind of two prices out there in the world. There's the flea market price, and then there's the vendor price. Some items are always vendor items. Sometimes they have a little bit of a barter like dog tags, but most of the time you're going to end up just selling dog tags to the vendor. None of the barters are really great. So if we go and look at the therapist, we can see that the dog tag prices for a level 49 is 18,522 rubles. For a level 27, it's 10,206. So these are kind of some key fall off points. For me, if it's a level 26 or higher, generally I'll keep it in my inventory if it's taking up a slot. Otherwise, if I don't have any space for it, it's gone. Other items sort of have a hidden value and that's the barter value. So if we're looking at flash drives, when we go to the flea market, we can see the flash drive on the flea market right now, 64,999 rubles. But if we go and we look at Jaeger, we can see that for three flash drives, we can get this dog tag case here. So that means we can trade for this dog tag case and sell that to the vendor for 195,300 rubles. So what that does is set a sort of rough base value for these flash drives at 65,100 rubles. So what this means is that if you can fit this item into one of your cases on the way out, even if you die, this still holds the value of 65,000 rubles for you. Whereas if you were to try and sell this to one of the vendors, such as Fence, as he's the only one that'll buy it, 16,500 156. So that's a pretty significant value. And it's not directly advertised. Like you don't go look at Jaeger and you see the price is 65,000 room. Another consideration when you're looking at price per slot is how many things actually stack in that slot. So right here, I've got M80. You go look at the price of M80, it's 680 per round, but it stacks up to 40. So if you get a full stack of 40, that's 27,000 rubles for this one slot. That's pretty good. And then finally, there's some items out there that generally don't take a slot. So you've got this attachment right here. And if you see, if when I drag it, the gun lights up. So I have the ability to not have this take up a free slot in my inventory by sticking in on my gun. So I can pull extra stuff out of raid by attaching it to my weapon. And finally, another important aspect is compounding slots. So if we look, I have a sick case here and an ejector's case. The sick case takes up two slots, but it gives me 25 in return. So obviously you're going to have some keys in here, but I can also pull out like these dog tags. I can pull out this flash drive. I can pull out bitcoins. I can pull out all kinds of other stuff in this case, and it still only takes up the two slots. So that's multiplying my available slots. The same thing can be said for the injector case. So if we look at the injector case, we're getting 16 slots out of this thing. So if I go into shoreline, I go loot the spa and I pull out 16 morphines and that's it nothing even fancy like just 16 morphines these sell to the vendor for 10,000 rubles each it's 160,000 rubles for this one slot so all of this boils down to know the value of the item per slot don't take things out of raid that you think that you're going to use later that don't have the value per slot maximize the amount of money per slot look at the trooper armor and look at the other stuff that you can pick up if the trooper armor is less per slot than the other things that you can potentially carry there get rid of the trooper armor and take out the stuff with more value if you do that on a consistent basis you will make a lot more money there are helpful tools out there such as tarkov market the next major principle when you're trying to make money and escape from tarkov is how long you're spending in these raids if i take this attack two backpack in and i go run through shoreline and i spend 55 minutes in shoreline and i fill this thing all the way up with 35 slots and the average price per slot in my inventory is 15,000 rubles in total i'm carrying out 525,000 rubles worth of loot however i spent 45 Five minutes in that raid doing that. If I run to interchange and I do a stash run and I'm able to fill the same exact backpack in 15 minutes, I'm making more money per hour. So I'm being more efficient with my time. I'm still filling the same backpack, still getting roughly the same price per slot, but I'm doing it in half or even a third of the time. So in summary, maximize the amount of space that you have in raid and minimize the amount of time that you are 
inside of the raid. Finally, the last key aspect of making money in Escape from Tarkov is your survival rate. Obviously, when you die, you lose money, generally speaking. On top of that, PvP is not really encouraged by the current systems. The gear that you find on a PMC is not going to be found in raid, so it's going to only sell to the vendors for that minimum price, not the flea market price. There are some players out there that are really good at the game. They can go into interchange and win all the fights and get all the tech loot every single raid, but that's probably not most of us. So the key part of this final principle is know what kind of player you are. If you're a strong PvPer, then go run interchange change. Go get the graphics cards. Make a ton of money that way. But if you're not, run the safer options, which I'm going to list out now. So I've broken down the methods of making money in Escape from Tarkov into three general categories. And that's stash runs, high value runs, and scav runs. A stash run would be just using Map Genie, looking up the stashes for a particular map, such as Shoreline, and then just running the most efficient route you can to hit all those stashes on your way. A high value run is going into somewhere like Interchange and hitting all the tech stores to try and find graphics cards, or going into the spa and trying to find lead exits. And then finally, a scav run is basically doing a stash run or a high value run, except for just as a player scout. Now that you know the three general methods, let's look at ranking those into different classifications as far as safety. Starting with the high risk category, we have any of the high value runs. So if you're going to run into Interchange and you're going to try and get the graphics cards before everybody else, you're going to find players, you're going to fight them. You have to survive, otherwise it's not worth it. Medium risk, we have things like the Interchange Barter Goods run. So you're going to run through the back of Goshen, across the back of the mall there. You're going to loot all the different toolboxes and all the loose loot that's around there. Or you're going to go up to the second floor and you're going to hit a bunch of different stores that have Barter Goods laying on the ground. Additionally, a custom stash run falls kind of into this medium category. As customs is a pretty narrow map, it's very hard to go from one side to the other, hitting stashes and not run into players. Finally, the last category which is the one that I'd recommend for most players, is going to woods and doing stash runs, going to interchange and doing stash runs, or going to shoreline and doing some key runs. So on shoreline, on the west side of the map, over by the villas, there's 25 different jackets in that little town that you can loot. You add in the new extraction that's just north of there, the path to lighthouse, and you can run through that whole space in just a few minutes. So now that we've covered the key principles of making money in Escape from Tarkov, and the different methods that I would use to do so, let's talk about how I make money for the past two wipes, and that's passively. In the past two wipes, I have not intentionally gone and done a money run. It's all just been while I was doing quests or PvP and other things. And the way that I'm able to do that is maximizing my price per slot and the amount of slots that I can have in raid. So this is while I'm raiding, I'm picking up the best items, I'm throwing out the ones that are junk, and then I'm also using things like rigs and other backpacks to give me extra slots for the space that I get in my actual backpack. So using this method, I don't have to take time out to go focus on doing a direct money raid. Instead, I just play the game, I do the quests, and I run gear that either is cheap and that way I can save money in case I die. And if I get out of the raid, I take stuff with me that's good. Or if I have more money than kind of what I'm trying to sit around, then I can run, you know, more fun kits, just kind of do meme kits, whatever I feel like doing.